A. Let's get really personal. I want you to tell me the color of your eyes. Ooh, tell me your height. How much do you weigh? Ooh. How much hair do you have? Enough to be considered bald? Or is that hair just really, really blonde? Does that make you uncomfortable? Does it? Well, here's the thing. Answering questions when you're applying for immigration benefits requires you to tell some perhaps uncomfortable truths. And when you're working with an advocate, whether it's a lawyer or some sort of certified BIA rep, they might have to ask you those questions in lieu of the USCIS doing it themselves. So let's talk about getting personal on your immigration application after the break. Welcome back everybody. This is Law Great, the channel where I give you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes. My name is Damien DeNoble and this is Frontier Tech Laws. Awesome YouTube channel. So one thing that comes up uh, periodically in, in some of the lawyer chat groups uh, that I'm in is that um, a, a client gets mad at a lawyer for asking a personal question. And one thing I have to do on a daily basis is ask personal questions. Things that our paralegals have to do on a daily basis is ask very personal questions. Now, on the one hand, you have stuff that's that, that, that's sort of like, you know, vainly personal. So I, you know, I gotta ask your weight, I gotta ask your height, I have to ask, uh, you know, the color of your eyes. Truth be told, years ago, when I would do that in person, I would sit there, you know, with, and write, I would ask questions and I would kind of write them down by pen. It was awkward. It's awkward saying, kind of saying, and how much do you weigh? You know, especially if, if you're a man asking somebody of, of, of the opposite gender. But for whatever reason, it makes me feel awkward. I don't know if it should, but it made me feel awkward. And so now I typically just send out a questionnaire and have somebody answer it themselves. So so that's just the stuff about your body, about your appearance. But then then I have to ask you as your lawyer, you know, tell me about your criminal history. Have you ever been, uh, you know, rejected from from getting some sort of immigration benefit? Uh, have you ever done anything that just uh, seems like um, it, it's something you shouldn't have done in your status? Have Have you worked without authorization? Have you, you know, ever tried to uh, cause an insurrection? Have you ever been a prostitute? Did you come to the United States to have more than one marriage? Do you belong to a terrorist cell? Have you ever gotten weapons training for the purpose of overthrowing your own government or the government of another nation? These are questions I, I have to ask, sometimes because I'm filling out the yes, no portion of a particular form, uh, more often because I'm doing pre-screening for a client to see what, what their options might be. When I'm talking to clients who might have entered the country without uh, inspection, i.e. entered illegally, i.e. entered and, and become undocumented, it's really necessary for me to go into the background of, you know, how many times did you enter? What happened? Were you arrested? Were you held in detention? Did you go to a freezer? Did you go to what's called a dog kennel? All of these things are necessary for me to understand the history, but guess what? It's really personal. It's really embarrassing. So as attorneys, you know, those of us who are, who are trained well, we know that we can't just jump into those things. And it requires some prep of a client to help them understand that, hey, I'm here for you, but I'm going to need to delve into all your personal stuff in order to better help you. Some clients, maybe they aren't prepared or maybe they just don't get it. They, they, know, they understandably recoil and say, why are you asking me all this personal stuff? You know, that seems really personal. Why do I need to do this? You know, isn't immigration just filling out a form and then like the person I love or just like kind of want to help comes over? Well, the thing is it's not, you know, uh, it's it's an incredibly, whatever immigration process you do with, with almost no exceptions is now an incredibly intrusive process that involves extensive background checks uh, that involves disclosure of very personal details. Yes, your weight, your height. Yes, your criminal background history, right? Yes, your merit certificates and the death certificates of prior spouses and divorce certificates. And if you're applying for certain things like asylum or you're applying for certain waivers, you have to talk about the times that you enter the country illegally, perhaps. As your lawyer, it's my job to help you navigate what those uh, different avenues are. And so, I sometimes have to be even more personal in, 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 in asking you questions that the USCIS will be. Because at the end of the day, it's better that you and I understand your case better than the government agency so that 
uh, we can help you get a better result so that we have an information advantage. So the next time you feel like things are getting really personal with immigration and you're feeling uncomfortable, know that that's kind of supposed to be like what it feels. And if, if, if you're not comfortable with that, you have to ask yourself, am I ready to go through this process? And should I talk to somebody to help me understand it better? If you doubt this, it's just coming from this talking hit on YouTube, check out any of the websites like VisaJourney, Boundless.com that have lots of information that talks about this and you'll see what kind of commitment this requires. One more thing. I, you know, I had a call today that kind of triggered all this and it triggered all these posts that I would see on, uh, on these different lawyer groups and all these conversations I've had with clients. I had somebody call about a K-1 visa and it was somebody that very, it was very cute meat, right? They met their loved one on uh, uh, on an RPG game, I forget which one, maybe World of Warcraft. And uh, they'd never met this person in real life. They'd chatted with them always on, on different text messages. And uh, they're like, well, you know, I, I, we want to get married. I, I want to marry this person. Things are not great in their home country and we care about each other and I can't stand by and do nothing. And uh, I proceeded to ask questions about the relationship. Like, hey, did you talk about your goals for life? Why do you want to get married? And the person clearly hadn't thought through these and was kind of taken aback that uh, I would ask these things. Like, why do you need to know that? Well, I need to know that because on your K-1 fiance visa application, you need to demonstrate that you know that. You need to know who you're getting married to, why you're getting married. And it turned out this person hadn't even met the other person and, and you know, in real life, they, they just continued this relationship for a long time online. I suggested that they, you know, meet in a third country and, and do some other things. But the point is they were taken back by what to me were very straightforward questions. And I wanted to be like, hey, I didn't even get personal yet. You know, I haven't even scratched the surface. The immigration process, bottom line, is not a surface level process. Uh, it used to be you could, you could do a FOIA for somebody who filed like my parents did for a green card in, in the 1990s and you might get 16 pages of documents back. Well, during the Trump administration, we were filing 500 page applications for green cards, very intrusive, with something called the public charge form, the 944, which the Biden administration mercifully got rid of. It, it was like the biggest audit of someone's life ever. And I, I remember filing these 500 page applications for like, you know, Ivy League professors with $200,000 salaries who'd been in the United States for 15 years and was still a 500 page application. So the point is it's intrusive, it's personal, get used to it uh, and uh, be comfortable both with the people that you're going through the immigration process with and the people that are helping you. So thanks for letting me rant a little bit. That's my uh, video for today. I hope you like it. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like if you've gotten this far, because if you've gotten this far, you're cool and you and I are meant for each other. We're meant to see more videos together. So go ahead and subscribe. Thanks a lot.